You're listening to Radio Blah Blah with Jeff and Jeff. Okay, here it is, another edition of Radio Blah Blah. My name is Jeff Scott. I'm here in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. Joining me every single time over in Nova Scotia, Canada is... Jeff Gray. How's it going, Cool Uncle Jeff? It's going really well. I just got back. Cool Uncle Jeff still has Barbados sand uh, in his uh, pants. (laughs) That's exactly, that's what I was just going to say. I'm I'm doing really well. I'm I'm just a, a week back from being in Barbados. Yeah. Um, where I got to talk to some people who actually um, had taken an interest in the Radio Blah Blah podcast. Cool. And so yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, so it. Um, That's cool, Uncle Jeff. It is cool. Isn't it? <laughs> I actually, I, I think this whole format is kind of neat, Jeff, because I was when I was down there when you told me uh, we were texting back and forth, mm-hmm. and you told me that the show was up to episode four, mm-hmm. um, which was one hit wonders. Uh, I was able to, you know, download it. Uh, in my room to my phone, and then I was able to, I took it down and I listened to it on the beach in Barbados, just so you know. Oh, I, was cool. laying, I was laying down on the on the beach and, and yeah. listened to that. So, toes in the sand while we're digging out snow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so here, here, and also for everybody who's listening to the show, we need to recognize a very special event that happened this week, and that's Jeff Scott's fiftieth birthday. So, happy oh. birthday, Jeff! Well, thank you very much, Jeff. It's a big accomplishment. <laughs> it is because you know what? There's a lot of people don't make it to fifty. That's but, that's what people are telling me. You know, be be thankful that you've made it that far because some people don't i don't know why but i found i found when i turned 50 and i'm moving i'm turning 56 in april right mm-hmm. and uh i found when i turned 50 that it was kind of neat i thought i kind of decided that it was kind of neat it was like half a century right yeah and you can look at it any way you want to but i looked at it that way i said this is this is neat and like my wife and i both decided that in the year that we turned 50 we'll do something special yeah. and what i did was what she wanted to do was she wanted to go she ever since she was a little girl or teenager, at least she wanted to go to Bermuda, mm-hmm. so we arranged to go to Bermuda that year. Poor us, um, and I um, bought myself uh, a American Stratocaster uh, for my fiftieth. So, you, so you remember it as a very fond times. So I always look back on it and say, "Hey, that yeah. was a great year." Right? Well, I kind of did something like that. I'd been searching for a 1966 guitar, right? Knowing that I was turning fifty, and I didn't buy it recently. I actually bought it last winter, but I did uh-huh. find a 1966. Uh, Tisco Del Rey, which is a very unique and odd-looking guitar, but it is a '66, so uh, I kind of have that. And anyway, <laughs> I, rem- I, re- I remember that guitar because you used it on our final episode of watching you the Kiss Talk Show. I did. That's the guitar I was playing. Yeah, yeah. a very unique <laughs> guitar, and, and that's a great idea. Yeah. I think you know because yeah. you you yeah. always remember that. And yeah, for sure. You know. So anyway, when I was in Barbados, um, mm-hmm. I met some people down there. I just want to give a shout out to a couple people that I met who listened to the show. Yeah. Um, there's Sue and Julian Sullivan. They're good friends mm-hmm. of ours. We actually met them last year in Barbados. So hello, Sue and Julian. And they listened to our show and made some new listeners while I was down there. Um, Gordon Payne and Christine Payne um, are new listeners to the Radio Blah Blah. They're the people I met down there. But when I was there, um, I was laying on the be- I was laying on the pool one afternoon. You go down to the beach in the morning, and you uh, you, you've got it rough, Jeff. I know it was tough, yeah. and I, I was down on the beach. You go down on the beach in the morning, but in the- I find it gets a bit hot down there in the afternoon. So I always go up to the pool. But there was this guy laying by the pool every day, just this younger guy. Well, for me, he was younger. I don't know how old he was, but he was all by himself laying by the pool, and everybody wondered, you know, what was this guy doing by himself at this resort, right? Mm-hmm. You know, was he a serial killer? Was he like with MI6? Because everybody down there is like, you know, from the UK. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I'm, we just happened to be laying at one end of the pool together at the same time one afternoon, and he was laying back. Oh, there's my dog. All right, come lay down. All right. So I'm laying by the pool, and and Donna comes, <laughs> Donna comes, Donna comes over. She knows that both of us. We're not talking to each other. This other guy, and and uh, we're we're both listening to music. And she he he, he opens his eyes, says hello to her, and she says, oh hi. And uh, he says, you know, what are you listening to? She was just curious, and he says, I'm actually I'm listening to the Who. A live, a, no, he says I'm listening to a live concert, and I said, "Oh, oh!" And I, I perked up and I was listening to some music. I said, "What, what do you, what live concert listen to?" He says, "I'm listening to the Who," and I said, "Well, which concert is it?" He says, "Philadelphia," and I said, "Oh, Philadelphia. When, which, which, what year was it?" I'm thinking he's going to say like you know some classic show in the yeah, '70s or something 71. like that. Yeah, he says his last in 2015. Yeah. Or 2014. I said, what? I said, the Who is still playing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And I said, but it gave me an idea for a show. So his name is, anyway, his name is, uh, I want to say hello to Mike Brooks. And I said, you know, that's a great idea for a show for us. Is to yeah. talk about all of these ancient bands who are still out there rocking away. Yeah. Uh, you know, still playing tours. And, you know, 
how you know are they relevant today are they producing any new music do they still does their live show today capture you know the essence of their youth still or is you know does it do harm and i thought that might be a good thing for us to talk about today because i I made a whole list of all those questions i would say no 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 (laughs) no no (laughs) they're not relevant (laughs) relevant yeah so the, the question that got me is are they able to capture what they got well, probably not, in their right? youth. And, and and I'd say no for so many different reasons, which we can discuss as we get further into it. Well, yeah. What's, I, what, so I thought what we'd do is i throw, I, I did a little bit of research and found a bunch of bands that are currently out there playing shows. Like The Who is one, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I actually posted that on our Facebook page this morning, that, uh, a show from last year, uh, and put that on there. And so here's just, some, here's just some names of, I'll run them down, and we can maybe circle back to some of them. Yeah. But, like, for instance, The Who is out there. Obviously, ACDC is out there playing all the time. Mm-hmm. Our, one of our favorites, Kiss, is still playing. We've had some dialogue about what they should be doing on, on the other show that we do. Mm-hmm. Cheap Trick is out there. Rush is yeah. kind of winding down, but they're doing their R40 tour. Yeah. Boston, I know we've seen s- some stuff on Boston. We should circle back and talk about them. Mm-hmm. Alice Cooper is still going strong. Metallica is still going strong. Slayer plays a lot. Megadeth, Anthrax, um, Judas Priest, Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, guns. But Sabbath are wrapping up. Yeah, so so yeah. What's the story on them? Like, I didn't, I didn't hear well, that. Well, well, they played Halifax. Um, I th- can't remember if it was last April or April before. I think it was around April, hmm. and I couldn't get there. It was midweek. Um, I just couldn't get the time off, and it sold out. I, I just sold out, and I knew people that were going, and I thought, oh man, <laughs> original Sabbath without Bill Ward. But I mean, when do you get a chance to see that? Anyway, they're winding down. They they've got just a few shows left, and then they're and then they're packing it in. But you know, I did see uh, the DVD. You know, living in the east coast of Canada, we don't have access to a lot of these bands. And in order right. to discuss this, you know, you say, how do you how can you discuss this when you don't get to see these bands? But you know, they do make the DVDs, and there's enough um, cell phone footage out there to to know who's who's on the go and who's still doing what. And and um, the DVD I saw of, of Black Sabbath that tour was was quite good. Right. Ozzy was good. Oh, uh, Tony was great. Geezer was great. The drummer was on acid or speed or something, <laughs> and it was great. I, I enjoyed it. I think that, that, and that's one of the things that we can talk about is that I think when you look at YouTube, you know, for a band like Sabbath, if you look at their original incarnation in terms of what mm-hmm. their stage presence was yep. and, the, and the type of music they played. Um, oh, and I should have added Motley Crue onto that list. They just mm-hmm. did a farewell show, but. Um, you know, band like Sabbath, you know, you would expect that they might be able to pull it off because, you know, it's not like they, they were never the kind of band to run and jump off of the stage and, you know, they were more posing or just, yeah. you know, they were more menacing looking and, and sort of, you know, standing there and playing your guitars and, and um, I would expect that they could and I've heard, when I've heard them live, like you said, I found that they actually can, you know, they they do remind me of what they used to do, maybe not the same energy level, but mm-hmm. they certainly can pull off a good show. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know one. I've watched a lot of um, old Sabbath concerts mm-hmm. on YouTube. It's just great. YouTube is just you know, every musician, every music fan's dream. I mean, I wish we had that twenty years I ago. Know. But I was watching some concert from '71. I thought, my God, it sounds like the studio. It's yeah. amazing how much yeah. they were able to replicate their studio sound live, or should I say, in the studio they sounded like they did live. Right. Um, which which just shows that they well, didn't use too much overdubbing or true. studio trickery. Yeah. I was just amazed at how similar the sound was. But you know what makes a huge difference there sometimes is the singer. Right. Um, Ozzy, to me, sounded just like he did on the album, so he's consistent. Whereas you take someone like Mick Jagger, and I'll, and I'll always pick on Mick, and I, and I got great respect for the Stones, but the thing about Mick Jagger is that in the studio he sings and on stage he talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He does this weird thing, like he get on stage, right? He goes, jump a jack flash, it's a guys, guys, guys. He's monotone. He, he's very monotone. It's it's almost like he can't hear the music, and he can't hear himself, and he's just, you know, he's doing his mick thing, right? And you, you all know, you can just, I'm, everyone right now is picturing what I'm doing. But <laughs> yes, I am, actually, yeah. And uh, he's doing the mick thing on stage, and that's very <laughs> energetic and very entertaining to look at, but he's not, he's not really singing the parts, is he? No, no, he isn't. And they say, and you know, everybody that talks about the band, the, the Stones, after the concert. They always say the same thing. They always say, "Oh, it's amazing that a guy his age can move around the way he does." Well, you know, you That's, can kind of use, the, yeah, exactly. And you can kind of use the Stones as as your 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 yardstick or your whatever the word is, whatever the reference is. Yes. It, as long as the Stones are still doing it, 
why should anyone else pack it in? I mean, what band is older than the Stones? The Beatles, they're not around anymore. I don't think there's any band as, as old as the Stones. So if you look at a band like Kiss or Cheap Trick or Sticks and say, you guys are still touring, yeah. they'll say, well, look, as long as the Stones are doing it, why, why can't we keep doing it? Well, the Stones have been like this since the 70s. Like oh, yeah. he, their act hasn't really changed since the seventies, oh. you know. And you, you mentioned like I was, I watched, um, I think I posted a Stones concert on the on the page as well this morning in anticipation of, of this new show. And what I noticed is that the with some of these big bands, the older they get and the longer these things go on, you can tell because they get mo- they get more and more background singers and more and more lights yeah. and more and more background musicians. Yeah. And, and you can and and I was watching the Stones one. It was interesting to see that. Like the key players, like there's all the, there's a bass player, there's background singers, there's other musicians, mm-hmm. and they're all dressed in sort of like grays. Yeah, and because yeah, they can't detract from the yellows right. and the oranges of the stars. Exactly. Like Mick yeah. comes out in like a bright red, and 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 Keith's in this fluorescent green of some sort, yeah. and and Ron Woods in this beautiful black outfit, and they you yeah. know so they stick out like a store of thumb. But I, that's that was the mental note I made with them was that. Was that they're they're a great example of how, you know, really since the seventies, ever said what you know the best live show ever people used to say, right? Mm-hmm. And really, their live sound is not phenomenal in any way, shape, or form. It's just, and the show is actually probably pretty much the same, right? Yeah, as it's always been. And for well, I mean, you know, if you if you if anyone bought a ticket to the Stones, yeah, they they really don't want to hear any material that i mean i don't know how many albums they've done in the last 20 years and then every now and again they put out an album that has a hit that's you know i can't remember any though uh, uh just trying to think maybe in the 80s it might have had like undercover of the night yeah i know that yeah, got a bit of yes. video player airplay and, yeah. and uh, but i mean if they're gonna go up people are thinking okay stones i don't care what you did in the last 25 years i'm here to see a stones concert so you better play satisfaction you better play get off my cloud you better play Ruby Tuesday. You better play all that stuff that made you famous in the in the late 60s. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if they want that, Jeff. I'm not even sure if fans who go to that concert want that other than just to say they went to the Stones. That's true. You know, and, and, and and you know, that's that's another point. It's interesting. Okay, like Stones have played here in New Brunswick a few times. They yeah. played the big outdoor show in Moncton. Oh, yeah, so, right, you know, the that. buzz is you go into the Stones, you go into the Stones, you go into the yeah, Stones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, not really. What? What do you mean you're not going to the Stones? <laughs> I said, well, I'm not. A, I never was a big Stones fan, and, and I just don't like outdoor venues. Yeah, I'm Because you're either going to bake in the heat or you're going to freeze in the rain. Yeah. One yeah. of the two, because yeah. when it's hot in Atlantic Canada, it's hot, and when it rains, it's cold. Yeah. You get the extremes. There's no in-between. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I pass on most outdoor shows uh, for that reason. And, um, yeah, I mean, people will go just to say, yeah, of course I'm going to the Stones. They conform, even if they don't even care for the show. But ACDC played the big outdoor show in Moncton last June, and I should have gone up, and I don't know. I just I had uh, reasons why I wasn't going to go up. But I I'm sorry know. I missed it, because they they're their ending. They won't be going through. No, I don't know. I mean, I, the reason I did, I had a chance to go uh, to a couple shows that I, that, that was one, and I had a chance to see, I think it was in 2008, I had a chance to see Metallica when they played Citadel Hill. Mm-hmm. And I still, that's a band I haven't seen. And so, but the uh, ACDC, the reason I didn't really want to go to see ACDC is because when I think, this is what always, I'm always leery of, is the same thing I was leery of when, when it came to Kiss, was that when ACDC was in their prime, mm-hmm. their show was so frantic and energetic and, yeah. and like Angus was everywhere on top of things. And whenever I've watched them on YouTube in the last two or three, four years, um, I just find they drag. And and that's where you depend on your video screen. Well, no, it's yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Because because as these bands get older, they do get slower, but they yeah. have more money, therefore they got a bigger video screen. Right, and they, and you got and you got more animations on your video screen. And you, you notice I mean, it. that's that's what makes it. Yeah, it's certainly that's what like makes my, the show because because you know yeah. you bought a ticket for a show. Let's say you went to see whomever in the seventies, and mm. you're way 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 back at the end of a football stadium. If you don't bring uh, binoculars, you're not seeing anything. Right. But now it doesn't matter because they got these gigantic big video screens, and you're going to see the performers, you're going to see animations, you're going to see pictures, and you're going to see all kinds of lights and lasers and 
and and and you know a lot of these bands now can completely overcompensate for their lack of energy by throwing in fifty thousand dollars with a video and lasers. Yeah, and and the thing is, I can see when you watch like Angus, like that was like Angus was such a huge part of that show. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong; each band member in ACDC brought something to the table, no yeah. question about it. But <clears throat> you know, if Angus looks like he's hobbling around a little bit, mm-hmm. it, it's. And his and, and the playing gets less energetic, or yeah. it you know I don't know if I it's sort of like I'm not really into seeing that. It's sort of like like I said to you about Kiss, the same thing. It's like, you know, to see Kiss less than their prime now, I was worried about them, you know, deteriorating my memory of of mm-hmm. what it was. So I kind of stay away from those things. As I was watching these, um, I watched a few videos today, and I've watched them lately. You know what I find extraordinarily annoying is the is this trend of bands to have these extra long um what do you call them loops playing at the beginning of the show to introduce them like these video things montages going on mm-hmm. and you know how you know how kiss does this big the, the, these sounds come on and the low rumble yeah and, or, <laughs> yeah. or anything like that and they just like i find when i'm watching them on youtube anyway i find they just go on and on and on, I think. Will you what, get to the? And then the band comes out. And it's almost anticlimactic because by the time the band comes out, you're almost like in a dead sleep. Yeah. I. I. I, I anyway. I, I don't. Here's, here's what, that's kind of interesting. The intro. I, I can't remember which one I was watching recently. It was some kind of a video, but some band. And I thought it's it's so strange the way they have absolutely no intro whatsoever. You just get these people walk out on stage. No one introduced them. They plug in. They do a few test chords or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it was Zappa. You know, oh, yeah. there's no introduction. He just he just goes to the audience and says, I'll, we'll be ready to play in a couple minutes as soon as I tune my strat. <laughs> and then, you know, okay, you guys ready? <laughs> it was that kind of that's, thing. That's old school, though, right? That's I like- saw the Stampeders uh, here in St. John, yeah. and there was no introduction. Rich Dodson walked out on stage, plugged in his guitar, and he says, he says to the microphone, he said, I'm ready. And he's waiting for the other two guys to come on stage. And and to me, that's so untheatrical. And, and to me, one of the best bands, example, is Kiss. Exactly. They bring the lights down. They get that low rumble, whatever to use, and some kind of synthesizer. And, um, you know, and then, of course, name the, the city by, and, and hope you get the city right. Yes. <laughs> okay, Montreal. Hello, Cucamonga. You're one of the best. And, and you know, you get, you get them into a frenzy in this big early voice introduce the band yeah. and then explode the stage with lights and lasers and bombs and to me that's that's the way to do it and i'm so uh, almost it's just weird how can you just walk out on stage willy-nilly with no introduction and just start tuning your guitar that's so untheatrical i don't think you can do that anymore i think that's unprofessional no. now yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's, don't want that. yeah and it's but it's just for me it's just like sometimes i'm finding like it's overkill it's mm-hmm. like, like for some bands, it doesn't add anything to it. Like if you, if you, and we'll, we'll focus on Kiss for a second because if you go back to the, you know, how I pictured Kiss Alive, for instance, to me that was the perfect one, which was you picture an, a, 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 you know, a black, like completely dark, and then and then all of a sudden a voice comes out of nowhere and, and, and excites you into wanting to see who the band is and you know and, and announces them, and then they they hit the stage, right? Yeah. They don't just wander onto the stage. Yeah. And it's it's this it's just space, but I've noticed like a lot of these bands now they just anyway it's like two three minute thing going on like and like you it's just I'm putting me to sleep by the time the band gets out so <laughs> I don't mind that too much to me that's theatrics and that's that's part of it I, I so. like it if it if it's done well I just find too yeah. often it's just drones after okay like the Stones one went on and on and on and then when they actually came out and I found the same thing with ACDC they had this whole thing going on with this train but then they come out and then they're they come out. I remember one year they were coming out with one of their new songs, uh, was their lead song for the for the tour, and it's certainly not one of their higher energy songs. So the mm-hmm. song choice, the poorest example is I shared, I shared a, a Bon Jovi concert. I, I can't remember where it was this morning, Jeff, um, in France, and I think it was France. Oh, it doesn't matter where it was. Anyway, it's on our YouTube page. Sorry, it's on our Facebook page. And oh my God, what a, what a horrible way to start a concert. Really? Oh yeah, it's like, oh, and I'll leave I'll leave it to people to go look at it. But it just there's there's there is there's this whole musical sound bit that goes on in front. Then finally, when they come out, they play this middle of the road song. Yeah, and it comes like oh oh gee nice to tap my foot. Yeah, <laughs> you know if anybody taps their foot to my rock and roll show, I think I got a problem. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so what yeah. do you think? So you saw. So, so, so the whole idea here. So, what do you think of? Um, with, well, first of all, back to what Mike Brooks was listening to. He's listening to the Who. So I went and researched that, and I listened to a show, and I was actually expected it not to be as good as it was because I'd seen him. Remember the Who played like halftime of. I don't know if it was a Super Bowl or it was a yeah yeah it was probably about four or five years and ago and it was yeah. horrible. And well, it, I don't know if it was so much horrible as I was happy it was the Who and not Nicki Minaj. Yeah, but <laughs> so I'm I'm in my kitchen I'm getting some food ready and and uh, <laughs> I had it on yeah and it's like at the Who okay right on and and I'm thinking yeah this is the way it should be right bring in. It should be, but it was bad. Bring in, bring in something that's that's that gets me excited. I agree. Something that that's really cool. And I mean, I, I'm sure the 20 year olds are thinking, "Who's this?" Excuse the pun, but uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. And and I'm standing in my kitchen. I actually, after a while, actually had some windmills going with my right arm. And my wife looked at me and she said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm doing the Pete Townsend." And when she looked on the screen, he was doing the same thing. And she just laughed. I mean, she knows nothing about the Who. She didn't know any people in the band, and and uh, it I, it brought me into a mood that forced me into a windmill. So there you have it. So how bad their performance was, or how bad their sound was, I didn't care because I was seeing the Who. Yeah, well, yeah. We, <laughs> well, yeah, we, we've we've had this discussion before in another way, right? We had the same thing with the the Kiss concerts and things like that, and yeah. the, the most recent ones because, like, we we won't go into that too much. But again, it's like. You know, the it's the spectacle isn't enough for me. Like I still want them. It's to It's got to be good music yeah. and good performance. Yeah, it, and I mean, it, can these people still still do it? Well, um, here here's another thing. Just, well, you, you know, let's what? Sorry. Well, I was going to say though. What I was going to say though was that the one I just shared was yeah. a surprise. Was surprise was really good. Like I was, I was. If you go watch it, it was actually like he, he does a lot of windmills and stuff. But they actually, yeah. they were they had a lot of background musicians. <laughs> but well, I it, mean, it's only Pete and Roger, yeah, right? So but they you've sounded, lost they when st- you lose John Entwistle, you lose a huge part of that sound. But they sound. Now I don't great. know if you're going to get a guy who's just going to fall into a regular yeah. bass line or someone who's going to copy John Entwistle. Yeah, I don't know, but that's a huge part of their sound. Was this? It it's, was. It's like Iron Maiden without Steve Harris. You're not going to get that no, sloppy that's right. bass sound. But my point was that um, they did. They did sound really good, and I would have. Mm-hmm. It would have been worth seeing, you know. So it would have been. It wouldn't have just been. What do you call? It's a nostalgia act. I mean, it is, but it was. It would have been worth seeing because Pete was playing really well, and Roger was singing really well, and it yeah. was worth seeing. So I could see why. Uh, you well, know. you know, here's the thing with these bands that have been on the go for forty plus years. Um, what it comes down to now is is uh, can can everyone do their parts? Yeah, and it's different for each person. And I think that uh, the, the most recognizable sound is your singer because yeah. these are vocal bands. They're they were putting out songs for radio play, so therefore, you know, fifteen minute uh, instrumental jams work for Floyd. But for most bands who want to get on the radio, they need to have songs. So therefore, you have a singer, and the singer is the most recognizable part. Of that band Absolutely. and of that sound. So when the singer can no longer do it, um, one of the things uh, that I've noticed is how much the the pitch has had to drop. And it's only because I'll pick up a guitar and I'm thinking, okay, I know this song and yeah. I'm playing along as something's on YouTube. And I'm realizing that's been dropped at least a semitone, if not a full tone. Yeah. Um, can the singer still pull it off? And if the ki- singer can't pull it off, um, can you still go out there and do that? You can replace, um, and not to put down the drummer or the bass player in any way, but sometimes you can almost replace the drummer and replace the bass player, and you probably don't even notice yeah. a huge difference. More likely. Um, yeah. You can replace the guitar player to some degree. To mm. some degree. You can't replace Eddie Van Halen. No. You can't replace many, many great guitar players, but in some cases you can replace the guitar player, and then you're probably not going to notice a huge difference. When that singer... Uh, is no longer able to perform what they used to do. That's that's when you're going to notice the difference. Um, and just to mention a couple bands, you mentioned Boston earlier. Well, their lead vocalist Brad Delp had died sometime in the last decade, and they found a guy who's a Brad Delp clone. Hmm. He is, he's like his twin twin brother, <laughs> you know, separated at birth. It's just amazing. Another band is Journey. Who doesn't work? Who don't work with uh, Steve Perry right. anymore? But they found a, a young fella who does Steve Perry better than Steve Perry, so <laughs> they brought him on board. And th- so, so what you've got here is a tribute act, basically, yeah. <laughs> with a with a sound alike. And 
you know, these bands today have to work under different different guidelines. It's like, okay, uh, either we don't have these people anymore or we don't want to work with these people anymore, so how do we make it work? Do we go for a completely new sound or we try to imitate that sound with a clone and uh, throw Van Halen into the mix? You know, when they, when they brought Sammy Hagar on board, Sammy Hagar doesn't sound like like David Lee Roth. Um, so so the band took a turn, but now they're they're a nostalgia band. So what do they do? They bring David Lee Roth back on. It's as difficult as, as it is to work with him, and, and as terrible as he is on stage, people want to hear David Lee Roth. So you know, it's it's you're right with respect to the with the vocalist because I thought about I thought about Kiss when we were doing this show, mm-hmm. and I thought about you know in Kissdom, of course, there's the big controversy of you know. Um, you know, Ace Frehley and Peter Chris not being in the band anymore, Bob, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer are. And I thought to myself, you know what? If Paul Stanley could still sing, mm-hmm. I'd probably still have an interest in seeing them. Yeah. So you're right. So it's, but, but because he can't sing, it, 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 it makes it almost impossible. It's funny yeah. you mentioned, you mentioned, um, you mentioned, I wanted to talk about Van Halen because I've seen some, did you see the, the, was it Jimmy Fallon or was no? It was Jimmy Kimmel. They yeah. were on Jimmy Kimmel Live when yeah. Van Halen was on. Did you see that? Did you see that yeah. when David Lee Roth Dave, Dave broke his nose? himself in the nose with a mic stand? <laughs> <laughs> There's still, even though he, he, I don't even know if he knows what he's singing. Like, he, like he, the way he goes on sometimes, he starts talking about making stuff up. But yeah. there's something. There's still something there when he and Alex and Eddie are together. Yeah. Uh, and Wolfie does a decent job, right? Yeah. Um, but I think Wolfie is actually pulling off some of those vocals that Michael he is. Anthony yeah, he is. was able to do. So so they've got that harmony yeah. still working. That sounds good. I, I almost um, wanted to see th- them. I almost wanted to go see them. They were playing in yeah. They were playing, they in were Bangor. playing Montreal a few years ago, and I tried to get up to well, see Well, last summer they played Bangor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing about David Lee Roth was, I mean, he was so, God, the charisma he had, yeah. just his whole look. Yeah, the, the long hair and yeah. those those you know glittery clothes and the way he moved. I mean, David Lee Roth was just the almost like the stereotypical rock star. Yeah. He just had whatever it is. He had it yeah, in, yeah. in abundance. And now when you look at him, he just looks so friggin' goofy. Does yeah. he, with all that hair yeah. cut off, and when he grins, he's just got this big l- wide grin, and he just looks goofy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does, but you know, yeah. it's st- it's still. It's it is just that it is the true Van Halen sound, right? So yeah. it's I, yeah. I I would have gone to see them even if it was a even if it was a train wreck. You know, I think it would have been worth seeing it because well, you know, what you're going to see is Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, what's well, that whole Eddie and Alex that pocket, yeah. right? And oh, even yeah. if even if even if Eddie if, still got us, oh, Eddie yeah. will never lose it. I don't think. Although and that's the that's the thing, you know, like getting back to what I say about singers, I think singers can tend to lose something over the decades and they're certainly losing pitch so they have to lower the instruments a bit um sometimes but for they some do. reason i think the guitar players they just still seem to have it well it's you know? because it's an ex- it's it's a uh, yeah I, I mean you and i still play guitar and we're getting older i'm a better yeah. guitar, i'm a way better guitar player right? until you get arthritis in your hand or you develop writer syndrome or something i mean i think that these guys, as long as you stay practiced I think these guys are still able to pull it off. I mean, Eddie impressed me. He still had the chops. He still had the the sounds and the little squeals and harmonics. And, sure. And he just makes it look so effortless. It's like he's not even thinking about it. Yeah. It's like there's something in his fingers that just <laughs> become electric once he touches the guitar. <laughs> and, and there are some. I mean, and there's some bands like you said. There's some bands that's the key. The singer's the key. But there's obviously yeah. some. There's some bands where you have to have uh, all the members of the band, you know, playing there. But I am noticing though. I was looking through. We're thinking of who. You know some of the bands that are still kind of relevant, um, and that that remind me of their original incarnations that still play the same way they did with bands like Rush, um, mm-hmm. Metallica. I, 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 we won't talk about these in detail. But I'll just go through them real quick. But, well, like, th- just getting back to Rush. Rush. I don't know. Getty Lee doesn't seem to age. <laughs> he he kind of looks. He just looks the same. And and they. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a huge Rush fan, and I can't really compare new with old. But the little bits I have seen, they they just seem to be effortlessly playing. Exactly as they did when they were in their twenties. Well, they've always been a band, Jeff, of um, artistic integrity in terms of like it was about playing first, and the yeah. show was always second. So they've always stretched themselves musically. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't see Geddy Lee as as a rock star. You see Geddy Lee as someone who'd leave the stage and then 
go have an intelligent conversation with someone. I don't know, or or share a coffee with a journalist. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I just, it just don't see Getty Lee coming off the stage and saying, "Okay, where's my cocaine?" And no, I don't know. He could be the biggest cokehead in the world. Um, someone like I have heard that Neil Peart is doesn't follow the rock star lifestyle at all. He doesn't even like being a rock star. He doesn't do interviews. He's not interested in fans. When he leaves the stage, he just wants to go into his it's own not, world. Well, it's it's a little more whatever. to it than that. A little more to it than that. It's not just. It's not well, just. He's that, had some tragedy in his life too. It's not just. It's not that he's not interested in fans. He's just a, a bit of an introvert. So he's yeah. he's uncomfortable yeah. with 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 fame, and, yeah. and like you said, he has had things in his life. But he's just no. He's just a person. He, he just separates work, you know, church and state. Um, yeah. Alex, he, Alex, and Getty always are the two that are out front. Alex is a gregarious. He's he's a he, you know he's done things like he's been on Trailer Park Boys. He's been mm-hmm. you know he does all kind. He, he, he's very comedic in nature. And 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 they're they're so they're very grounded, so they're musicians, musicians, right? So they're still yes. they can still play. Is my point. And Metallica, actually, Metallica, uh, I've watched some of their concerts. Are actually they've continued to work on their musicianship. Slayer is the same thing. Megadeth, same thing. Um, so to me, all these are sorry to cut you off, but these are all '80s bands, and and I'm thinking. They, I don't, they're not as old as as people. No, but they're, but 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 in terms of them, they're Boston. they're aggressively, but they're aggressively touring. Like I mean, yeah. like Metallica was like you know, I think early. Still, I I wouldn't say they're in their prime, but I think they're they're still they're still young, relatively but, young compared to some others. That well, we've been you know about. You, you, that's true. I mean, if you yeah. were to compare, like like you know, James Hetfield, uh, Metallica is probably fifty six. Yeah. So that's listen to us. No, that's young. Right, yeah. so I mean, compared to Keith, Keith Richards, who is uh, two hundred, and yeah. you know, but yeah, you're right. They're, but but still, there. My my point is not so much that, is that when you look at okay, so if you look at Metallica and and Slayer and those bands, Megadeth and Anthrax, they all started in those early '80s. So how long ago is that? That's ten, Sorry. twenty. That's like how many years ago was the early '80s, right? So '90s, well, 2000s, thirty years, decades, for sure, thirty yeah. years. So, yeah. so st- to still be out there and to still be able to pull off, my, my, I guess what I was going with that is that they can still, you know, pull off the same show. And you're right; they're a little younger than Sabbath and a little younger than Kiss, obviously, yeah. about a decade. Um, I mean, I can see these guys being tired after thirty years of touring. You know, thirty years of doing anything, even if you enjoy it, that's that's got to be tiring. And, and touring is grueling work. And they, but they're you know, much it's so hard on the bottom. So then I think about these guys that have been doing it for forty, fifty years. Mm-hmm. I just don't see how the Stones are able to do it physically. Well, I they just don't, don't see it. They don't. Well, they don't. They, I mean, the way they tour, though, now if you watch any of the documentaries, well, it has to be adapted to them. Yeah, I mean, they don't. Yeah. They don't play. The Stones don't play like you know two hundred shows a year. No, and they play. They play big venues. They have. You know they they have people around them. They show up in limousines. They put on the guitar. You know yeah. they. It's not like they're a working band that's trying to make it make it happen for the first time, right? So Iron I Maiden. I mean, it's not a tour as much as it is a. Yeah, we're you're still right. doing shows. It's events. <laughs> it's more events. It's an event. So yeah. so yes, they will be limousined to the event. They're escorted to the stage. Right. The guitar is strapped on them. They look, just go out and do what you do. Right. And then 90 minutes from now, it'll be all be over. So what do you think of this? <laughs> you can what go th- home. What do you think of the whole um, Guns N' Roses reunion talk? Oh, gee, you know, it's so divided. I mean, to me, it all comes down to what Axel can do. I know what Slash can do. Yeah. Um, can Axel still do Axel? And if he can, geez, I'd love to be there. And there's so many people putting that down. I don't know why. Come on. Guns N' Roses is, was the, was there a band better than Guns N' Roses in the eighties? Van Halen, Guns N' Roses, come on, they were they were top. Don't even compare Guns N' Roses to Slayer or Poison or Cinderella. Don't even go there. <laughs> well, I think I think they're legendary, and I would pay to see them. I think that um, I think the, the, the what people are worried about is just whether or not Slash and and Axel will be able to actually pull it off it's very this reminds me a lot of van halen you know mm-hmm. in, in terms of the the reasons behind the demise you know if and now mind you when guns and roses was touring and they were in their prime i mean so was van halen but they i mean they were toast i mean they were toast mm-hmm. i mean they you you see show you see old video of them on stage the slash is staggering around yeah and they just no they don't do that anymore and I've seen some I've seen some video of Guns N' Roses with with 
you know, with um, um, Axel singing, and I, I still think he can sing. He's he doesn't look the same. I mean, but neither do I. You know, <laughs> you know, Slash is one of the few guys. You know, he stayed pretty much the same. Well, no one knows what Slash looks like. <laughs> oh, I've seen him without his glasses on. I mean, he could, let's say that's a wig, right? So let's just say it's a wig. Right? <laughs> it's he a wig. could take that off. He could be walking around. It's a wig with a hat know, attached to it. Any any major city, and no one will know who he is. <laughs> Think about it. Would you imagine like it's a wig with a hat attached to it? Is what yeah, it's, it's, exactly. It's, it's glued in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he probably looks like Bill Cosby. He just he's yeah, just exactly. Yeah. Can you imagine that? No, take me down. <laughs> 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 oh my but I, I yeah i don't know what to make of it but i can tell you this much though i mean i really like the stuff that slash does and mm-hmm. and um so i don't know i don't know how much he's got to gain from doing this like the stuff he's he did with well you um, know here's the thing it's the magic ingredient yeah it's the magic combination i should say um yeah. it's 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 axel and slash that's guns and roses yeah. now if slash came through town um, yeah, I'd love to meet him. Love to hear him play. But if he's charging a hundred bucks to play Harbor Station, I'm thinking, well, I don't know. Do I really want to hear Slash? I mean, I want to hear Guns N' Roses stuff because right. I know the material. I don't know Slash's material. He's an amazing guitar player, but you I don't want to see. It. I don't want to see Slash without Guns N' Roses. You should. You should actually. I think you should check it out actually because he did. He did um, Snake Pit. Yeah, but he no, but he did stuff subsequent to that. He did a really good in. Uh, let's see, uh, when was it? About two thousand five. What was it called? I can't remember. It's called. But he did. See, a, I was raising babies at he, that time. He had. He had um, <laughs> music. What's that? He had um, <laughs> no, but Ozzy sang on it. Fergie sang okay. on it. Uh-huh. Miles Kennedy sang on it. Um, really good quality music with great singers. See, this- this is the kind of stuff that I hear about 10 years later, and I'm thinking, okay, now I can go check that out because I completely missed it uh, at the time because my, like I say, my focus is Go listen to it. I'll places. give you one song. But yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, give, I'll go check go that listen, out. Here's one song. Go listen to, go uh, listen to By the Sword, mm-hmm. okay, by Slash. And yeah. it starts an acoustic style in the song. You'll see what it, that's the, gives you a good sense of the rock and roll guitar that's in this album. Uh, yeah. Oh, what's his name? Ian, Ian um, oh, the guy from The Cult. Sang Ian on. Asper. Yeah, oh, and it's a great song called Ghost, yeah. right? I'll let on. And Fergie rocks out on it, actually. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. and so and now he does stuff with Miles Kennedy. Um, he's mm-hmm. a great, great, great singer, um, and really good. Anyway, so th- it's worth checking out. So I, I think I say he's he's really continued. Actually, he's probably better now than he was because I don't. I think he's sober now. Right? Well, that's the thing. I mean. To me, I only see a guitar player as improving through the years, mm. whereas the singer can abuse the voice yeah. and um, degrade over the years. That's that's where they don't meet anymore. Right. You know, you take a band thirty five years later. Does the does the talents of the guitar player match the talents of the singer? But if and that's where where you're going to have friction. Any I don't mean personal friction. Yeah. I mean I mean on stage, it's just yeah. not going to work anymore. Well, if you, anybody that doesn't, so here's the thing, any artist that d- takes care of themselves is able to continue, and those that didn't take care of themselves aren't, whether they're a okay, singer. I'll, I'm going to throw out David Gilmour, because you know what a huge Pink Floyd fan yeah. I am. Dave Gilmour did a solo album around 2005 hmm. called On an Island. There's a song on that that reminds me of something he had on an album with Pink Floyd around 69. Um, it was a soundtrack for a film. And I thought... Does that ever have that same kind of sound? And you know what? The voice. I played both of them back to back, and I thought, you know, forty-five years later, Dave Gilmore's voice is exactly the same. Wow! And is and is because he never was a heavy metal screeching vocalist. Right. Uh, he was not a smoker. He wasn't a drug user. Not mm. a big drinker. Right. And uh, he just took care of his voice. That gentle, beautiful tone. Yeah. If, if you're a Dave Gilmore fan, you know what I'm talking about. But um, just comparing his album on an island to uh, anything he did in the late '60s, it's just the same voice. It's exactly the same, he, and, he, and and I think that's great. I, I, and I do, and I think that I think if you look at, um, I would I would compare like even metal voices if they take care of themselves, if they sang mm-hmm. the right way in the first place. You take like uh, Judas Priest. You know, yeah. Rob Halford is still going on strong, and their act is exactly is is, is exactly the same. Like they're, they, mm-hmm. they're like in Cooper, like Cooper was never a great singer. So well, he, now I I you know I was listening to a lot of Cooper recently. Not not 
keep going, but I think he's a good singer. Anyway, well, not going. live. He's always <laughs> live. He's I I don't disagree with you on the studio. Like he has a unique voice, but live yeah. he's always been just you know he's been more of a performer than he has been a, a vocal. He does, well, he, when you spend more time running around the stage and interacting with the other players and yeah. bringing on, you know. Girls who look like uh, like they're dead. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just it is a theatrical show. Oh, yeah. Any, anyone who's up there doing theatrics, it's almost like that comes first, and and then the actual pitches uh, might might fall in place. And they he's may not, not. He's not that uh, far off. He's, he's he's like it's not that he's that. It's not that he they absolutely focus on the music first. There's no question in that Alice Cooper band. Like that. That like I said, I've always said if I could play guitar in one band, that would be the band I'd want to play in because that band mm-hmm. is outstanding and his vo- his just vocals have always been adequate and he's never live has not ne- you know he's always he's, he gets a lot out of it but the, with him the older he gets the better his character gets you know so it's one of those things where you know because of the character alice cooper he can get as old as he wants and it just adds to the show and he exactly. was never a runner like he wasn't a guy that jumped off of amplifiers. No, so. but he certainly does his share of prancing. Oh, around. he's a poser, yeah. right? So he's there's a, a difference, poser. though. Looking, looking for the theatrics. Here's the cane. Here's the sword. Right. So he. I can, mean, when you've got a 55 pound boa on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to hit those pitches? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if he. Frank been... Zappa admitted he can't. He doesn't want to sing with a guitar around him. Right. The songs that he has to sing on stage. He will not have a guitar strapped around him because he's looking for those notes. Okay, gotcha. Um, when when Frank has a guitar around him, it's for one purpose: is to do that right, solo. Right. So you have you have Frank the singer and Frank the guitar player, and they don't they don't mix. Gotcha. The um, what about uh, here's another band that that really translates well, continues to translate well as Iron Maiden. They still tour. and again like Metallica. To me, they're a young band who's been on the go for thirty plus years, yeah. but. Not as old as some other ones, and and geez, they still got the energy. They're running around stage. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I think. Look, if I think if you started a band in the 1980s and you're still touring aggressively now, mm-hmm. I still I still think you're pretty old compared to the bands that are you know, that are trying to make it today, and mm-hmm. even in the 90s, and you know, compared to you know the bands that started you know started in the 90s, uh, Motley Crue just did their farewell t- show, mm-hmm. right, and um, they finally called it a day okay yeah maybe i'll see him on the next tour <laughs> i don't know I, I think well what's his name mick mars i mean he's i don't know what kind of disease he had but he he was it's, re- called, it's called ugliness well he was he was um there's something that you're gonna god get, he was a hard fellow to look at you'll get some he'll get some hate mail for that one i know <laughs> but he um he had some Talk kind of judgmental i putting down a guy for the way he looks he had some kind <laughs> of um i don't know what it was some kind of disease and but he still kept going like he and um uh but anyway so there but there you go so there's that but then there's other ones like i watched um did you? I watch bands that don't continue to, to translate. Like Bon Jovi, to me, has become like a soccer mom band. Like, the, the, and they're not old, right? And no. they just come out and play. You know, like I said, foot tap and music. I saw a Def Leppard. Um, what was there's this show they do on CMT or something like that where they combine a rock artist and a country artist, mm-hmm. and they both they do each other's music. Anyway, Def yeah. Leppard did a show, a whole hour show with Taylor Swift. And I loved it when they did photograph together. Yeah, jeez, I loved it. I mean, Taylor Swift doesn't suit Def Leppard, but I liked what they were doing. It was interesting, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so funny. Um, these guys, I think they're they're you know how old are the guys in the band? They've got to be fifty plus, and they're oh, going yeah. for the total beefcake. You see, Phil Collin, he won't perform without. A oh sh- man, with a shirt he put on. a shirt on, buddy, and he's, and he's just ripped. He's it's, absolutely It's ripped. weird, man. It's weird. And I think there was another guy in the band, and I, I don't think it was Joe Elliott, but someone else in the band was kind of going for the same look. Maybe not as bare-chested, but, but it, I it's thought, man, I think, I, think, I think this guy said, you know what? My guitar playing is okay. I'm going to put that down and spend 10 years just working up my muscles. Then we'll go back, and I can go shirtless. <laughs> Listen, I, I admire the guy for taking care of himself. Well, but it's just yeah, it's, because but, there's enough rock stars out there that aren't. But it's just yeah. weird. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, he comes out all greased up. It's yeah, like it's, he's almost like he's oiled up. Yeah, yeah it's like I'm like, oh, come on, man. I mean, he is. He, he's a great guitarist. I mean, it's not like he yeah. can't play guitar. And yeah, uh, he can wear a shirt. Oh, like, I, I don't. Yeah. I just don't know why you have to go shirtless on stage. Well, Paul Stanley did enough of it. Ted Nugent did. Ted Nugent will come out dressed like Tarzan. I understand that. Though. You're seeing everything on Ted, right? And I'm thinking, put on a pair of pants. But I mean, he used to come out with his, uh, He used to come out on a what on a vine, right? Swinging, yeah, swinging across. Swinging on thing. a vine. Yeah, but that was part of the. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you know, but he was singing about the great white buffalo and exactly, you know, yeah. and but Phil, you know, put a shirt on, man. And when Slash, <laughs> I saw Slash playing with um, actually, you know, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're no, but they're go very, ahead. <laughs> what's that? No, but go ahead. Oh, you don't. Oh, I'll listen to Look, them. Look, man, I'm so out of tune with today's bands. I just don't. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, they're a really they're a young, really up and coming band that yeah. are they're not even an up and coming anymore. Very successful mm-hmm. band called Hailstorm, and yeah. she's a very oh man, what a singer, uh, and also hot at the same time. But I saw her playing with Slash, and Slash, and there's you know her, and she's like 21, 22. Yeah. And there's no slash sliming all over her, like because he's you know playing guitar, and he's got like no shirt on again, and and, and he should put a shirt on now. I mean, he, <laughs> he he's not quite as cut as as Phil is, and yeah. but even it just kind of creeps me out to see these guys out there with the shirts off like that, and it's like okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure some of the model girls like it, but yeah, well, you know, trying to relive past glory. I mean, yeah. Paul still goes shirtless from time yeah. to time. So there you go. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, there you go, Jeff. I mean, that's you know, there's a lot of like a lot of bands out there now that are still playing. Like I said, Madonna still tours. Ricky, I said Ricky Martin still touring. Just for your information, I didn't know. Nope. You know Ricky, you no, know, it's like I couldn't believe it. I was looking at the 2016 Ricky Martin tour. I didn't yeah. even know he was still out there. Ace there's Fraley's a, there's a soccer tour. mom concert for sure. Ricky, well, I don't even know what that is. Ricky Martin, I'm hard to say what that is. Yeah. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins is, are touring, right? Yeah. He's freely, of well, course. Well, you know, I think what it all comes down to is, do people want to see it? Yeah. And if people yeah. want to see it, then they'll buy the tickets. Yeah. If the tickets are selling, these people will stay on tour. And, I mean, okay, you mentioned, what, Hail, Hailstorm or yeah, something? Yeah, Hailstorm, yeah. Hailstorm. I, I, I'm not familiar with the band, and, and they might be young and, and great, and I'd probably enjoy the show. But if Hailstorm was playing in one venue... And the Who were playing in another venue. Guaranteed, I'm going to go see the Who. Well, so and I might walk out of that and say, "Well, you know, Pete can't do the windmills anymore, mm. and Roger can't really sing like he did, mm. and they don't have Keith and they don't have uh, John." But you know what? I saw the Who, and I knew every song, and I sang along and had a good time. Yeah. It all comes down to um, nostalgia: what yeah. people want, what people yeah. remember, and uh, if these bands are able to do it, then then all for them and something we talked about just before we started recording was you know you mentioned bands like the Rolling Stones and there's always someone who's just going to screw up their face and say you know are they still touring why bother just take those guys backstage and shoot them and get it over with and <laughs> yeah. there's always someone who's just totally yeah. grumpy over the whole thing yeah. and you know the way I look at it you know they're doing it and you're not so don't be putting down anyone who's out there making music that's what it's all about is making music and if you've only got two guys from the original band and the other seven people on stage are, are session players, so what? Because you're making an event for people to come and, and enjoy, and it's all for the music. Well, there you go. I mean, it's and I agree, and I think that, um, you know, there's so many, but I just seems, to, anyway, I, I, the reason I wanted to talk about it, and I want to thank, thank Mike Brooks again for coming up with the idea. He didn't really, he doesn't realize he came up with the idea. I told him I was going to do this. But mm-hmm. um, we, it, you know, it just seems like there's, I don't, maybe I'm getting old, but it just seems like there's there's more of this going on now than ever before. You know, I don't recall in the '80s being all these retro acts that 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 were playing, and uh, so you know, I mean, we're almost a you know, we've certainly squeezed a lot of this, but there's a lot of good acts out there to still see. Some of them, like so, we can argue about whether or not they're relevant. Most of these bands don't put out new material anymore, and they mm-hmm. just they're just playing the old songs, and uh, exactly. but some of them do, right? And one I just want to make mention of. We've yeah. talked about Boston. Yeah. Um, they played Moncton sometime in the last year, and I didn't get up to see oh, them. Yeah. And I'm just kicking myself over that. Someone had shot uh, a, a concert, a newer concert, within the last couple of years. Someone had shot it with a phone or a handy cam and posted it on, on YouTube. It was LA, now, you yeah. know how when you watch these things, you watch it for, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't watch these things for any more than a couple of minutes, and then the quality just... It just yeah. gets on your nerves. I mean, you're curious to see what they look like and what they sound like. But this Boston concert was so good, even though it was done with a phone or a handy cam. I watched the entire frigging concert. I was so impressed with, with the band. Tom Schultz playing the organ. Yeah. That alone would have been worth the, the price of the ticket. He's a friggin', he's like Phantom of the Opera on that thing. He's just going. Oh, yeah. And it was just phenomenal. And this new guy sounding like Brad Delp. I watched the whole thing on YouTube, and it was just great. 
And they had the, and then I'm thinking how much better it would have been had I bought a ticket and sat in the venue. <laughs> yeah, and then he's got a nice hot blonde girl singer that then plays guitar well, that and bass. Adds to it. Right, yeah, she she started playing <laughs> bass and uh, yeah, that, that's a good show. That was one shot in L.A. I think I'll see if I can find it and we'll put it up on the. Well, page. you showed me a, a an Alice Cooper concert when I was at your house. Oh yeah, and right. See this gorgeous blonde Orianthe. Orianthe. Yeah, he. I didn't know. He said, and you said, yeah. I said, wow. I just this concert just became so much more interesting. But that's I mean, you can yeah, cer- was- you you can certainly you know in- increase your your visual on stage by adding. <laughs> Um, sex appeal, no doubt about that. <laughs> but that that band, like, says she would, but she's a, a very accomplished uh, guitarist. Yeah. And now he has another um, girl in the band who was in the Iron Maidens. The Iron Maidens. Yeah. Um, Tr- T- Trish. No. Tr- Trudy. No. Yeah. Okay. No, another one you're talking it's about. It's the other one. <laughs> it's the other yeah. one with you know when she plays her boobs hang over the guitar. <laughs> Works. No. No. Yeah, this one does. Another one you're ta- in the Iron Maidens. Yeah. No, it's the other girl. <laughs> no, this one does too. Well, they both have nice boobs. Anyway, <laughs> oh, why did you say that? Yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. We're blah. We're not blah. male chauvinists on this show. Yes, we are. <laughs> blah blah blah. It's rock and roll. Oh, we yeah. talk about Lee. Right. We talk about Lee Aaron. I was watching the Shania Twain concert there yesterday for a little while in, in 2015 in Toronto. I said, "Holy mackerel! She's still wearing very tight stuff." Jeez, someone shot some some footage, and she, you know how they put these like runways where you walk yeah. out to the audience. So someone's shooting this with a phone. So so Shania walks by, and I'm thinking, my God, what a nice looking rear end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's my age, but there's no reason why women my age can't have a nice rear end. That's right. There's no, you know, that's right. I agree. Yeah, yeah but she, yeah, she still works it. So, mm-hmm. well, there you go. We're blo- now we're really blobbing on. Yeah, and then sure. my phone's ringing. And your phone is ringing. So uh, there's go. all kinds of great stuff going on here. Okay, Jeff, another edition of Radio Blah Blah. It's always nice to connect with you. Oh wait a minute. Wait. No, it's Shania. Shania's calling. Is it Shania? Yeah. Oh yeah. no, she called the wrong Jeff. She's trying to call me. Uh, oh, that's right. No, no, she would call the cool Uncle Jeff. She wouldn't call the other Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So we'll talk again soon. We Jeff. will talk all again soon. Yeah, for sure. It's been fun. All right, take care. Bye. Bye, folks.